done an experiment, and part of the experiment involved a ramp, and as some of the measurements that we took, we recorded the length L of the ramp and the height H of the ramp. And we did this because we are going to plot on the x-axis sine of theta. But we're not measuring theta. We're not measuring uh, anything except for h and l when it comes to the angle. So this is what we measured. h and l are both measurements, which means they have certainty. They have uncertainty. And we know the absolute uncertainty in each because we used a meter stick to measure uh, h. So this has some standard device uncertainty, just like L, because those were both measured with meter sticks. Maybe we want to estimate those values as higher than the standard device uncertainty, and that's perfectly fine. That's fine to do. So we want to know, we want to propagate our uncertainties, which means we need to know the uncertainty in sign theta so that we can create horizontal error bars on our graph. But the uncertainty in sine theta is simply equal to the uncertainty, the absolute uncertainty in h over l, right? Because this equals h over l. So the absolute uncertainty in h over l uh, is what we have to calculate. That's the final thing that we want to calculate. But first, before we can calculate that, first we're going to find the percent uncertainty in h over l. So the percent uncertainty in this quantity, well, the percent uncertainty in any quotient or any product of two measurements is simply equal to the sum of the percent uncertainties in each measurement, like that. So if you take some value h and you divide by some value l, then you add their percent uncertainties like I've shown here, you add their un percent uncertainties. Okay. The same rule applies, whoops, the same rule applies whenever we are multiplying two measurements. If we multiply two measurements, we do the same thing here. We add the percentage uncertainties to propagate the uncertainty. Now, any percent uncertainty, right, percent uncertainty in something B is simply equal to the absolute uncertainty in B, okay, the absolute uncertainty, divided by B itself. So that means this percentage uncertainty is the absolute uncertainty divided by the value itself. And this percentage uncertainty is equal to the absolute uncertainty divided by the value. Likewise, this is the absolute uncertainty divided by the value. So we want to find the numerator here. This is what we're trying to find, and we need to show one sample calculation where we find that for some value, some measurements, h and l. And we only have to show one sample calculation. So here we go. Let's say my, I'm making these values up, my absolute uncertainty in h, let's say I estimated it to be 0.1 centimeters, or maybe higher, I don't know. Maybe I estimated it as 0.8. And L, uh, L was a little harder to measure, so I mes estimated it as one centimeter, or maybe even two centimeters, who knows. Okay. And for one of my trials, the value of H was, let's say it was uh, 12 centimeters, but it wasn't 12, it was 12.5, because it has to match the number of decimal places, the number of places, right, as its uncertainty. So if delta H is rounded to one place, H is rounded to one place as well. And my value for, let's say my value for L, I'm only rounding to the singles place, the, de uh, the ones place, rather, because the uncertainty in L is rounded to that same place. So my value of L, let's say, was, uh, let's say my length was 43 centimeters. That's what I measured. Okay. In that case, I can solve for the absolute 
uncertainty in h over l in the following way. Let me take away this and take away, uh, let me move all this up. I plug in, okay, I plug in for everything except the unknown, which is delta h over l. So h over l is 12.5 centimeters over the L value, 43 centimeters. And this is equal to delta H, 0.8 centimeters, over the H value, 12.5. Got to include units in our sample calculations. And then delta L is 2 centimeters. And we divide by the value of L, which was 43 centimeters. All right. So to find the uncertainty, in H over L, which equals the uncertainty in sine theta, I have to calculate this value, add it with this value, and then I have to add the two together and multiply the sum by this. Right? To solve, that's how I solve for this. And if I've done this correctly, let's see, what do I get when I plug this into my calculator? Oops. Oops. Uh oh. If I plug this into my calculator, what do I get? 0.8 over 12 and a half plus 2 over 43 is 0.1105, but then I have to multiply by 12 and a half. And my absolute uncertainty is 0 0.03, okay? And of course, this has no units, because all of the units cancel. That cancels here, this cancels here, and this cancels here. So my absolute uncertainty in H over L is 0.03, and I've rounded to one sig fig. I've rounded to the first sig fig. I can't make it 0.032 because then I would have more than one sig fig and the rule in our class at the high school level is you're only allowed to express absolute uncertainty in anything, including h over l. You can only express the absolute uncertainty with one sig fig. 